Hi, so today we're going to be looking at how we can direct traffic um, from the internet through to our home uh, web server that we're running a couple of websites on. So we're going to use your domain registrar. Um, we're also going to use a dynamic DNS provider. We're going to configure the router um, and then we're going to run through the configuration that's required on ISP config 3 to direct the traffic and um, set it up as a DNS server so you can um, access the web server. So the first thing is we want to make sure that we've got our domain registrar set up correctly so what we're going to do is we're going to add the C name for the DDNS record so to get your IP address updating into your DDNS provider you would either use um, your router directly so some of the routers come with the DDNS uh, setup however because I'm hosting multiple websites it's not going to work for me so what I've actually got is I use the provider no IP and on my PC I've got the um, no IP updater running which is here so if we have a look at that um, that gives you the ability to automatically update your external IP address into your DDNS provider. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and have a look at the domain provider and we're going to see how we can set up to point to the DDNS provider. So in this instance I'm going to call my um, my new website dev.frimleycomputing.com um, and that is a C name that points to the DDNS name um, which I've got listed here uh, which is Frimley Computing DDNS Net. So that's all you need to do once you've added the C name that will then point all of the traffic for dev.frimley computing off to the C name here um, and we can have a look at um, uh, how that's set up. So here we are on noip.com, so this is what I use to host the uh, dynamic DNS record. Um, once you create your host name, um, as, a, as you can see here, this is the host name that I've got set. It's got my uh, current IP address because um, it's updated and you can see here that it's updated two hosts with the current IP address. So that updates the IP address there. Then you take the um, the dynamic DNS record and you add it into your cloud hosting provider, which I've done here. That basically um, then directs the traffic over to no IP. It will then pick up the IP address and then it will direct it um, through to our router. So the next step we want to do is we want to uh, make sure that our router is configured correctly so that it allows inbound port 80 traffic and also uh, domain traffic on port 53 on UDP and TCP. Now the reason for that is you have to be hosting the DNS record yourself but you don't want to host any of your active domains or the domain entries. So let's go and have a look at the router so in this instance I am using a TP link router so once you've logged on to your router you would come down to your forwarding now you can either set it up as um, you can either set it up as a DMZ server but that would allow all traffic inbound so we want to tighten it down a little bit so in, in this instance I'm actually using virtual server and what I've done here is I've added the service port 80 to point to my web host, uh, my web server, um, and that's also running on port 80 internal. And because it's uh, HTTP, I'm only using TCP. I've also directed um, inbound DNS traffic um, because I use that internally. So uh, in this instance, the service port is 53. Again, I want to direct that 53 traffic to um, my web server and that's going to be using port 53 and it's either TCP or UDP. So that's the only configuration that you need. That will then send the traffic through to your um, to your ISP config server. So let's now have a look at our ISP config and see what we need to do there. So this assumes that you've already got your website set up. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the DNS 
um, setup that you need. So in this instance, as you can see here, I've got the uh, I've got my server name. Now this server name is not hosted externally. Okay, so this is only a name. Um, you can't get to it from outside. But what you can get to is the domain that it's that's hosted on it. So we'll go in and we'll have a look at uh, the domain record. So my domain record in this instance is dev.frimleycomputing.com. Um, I've had to create some uh, an NS server. Um, you can't create your zone without it. But what I've done is I've actually used the records, as you can see here, the A record dev.frimleycomputing.com leads on to my uh, to my actual web server. Everything else is standard. Um, now what you do get when you create your domain record you'll get a www um, as the content so I just deleted that um, because I don't need it so it would the name would be www.dev.friendlycomputing.com I don't want to use that I just want to use dev.friendlycomputing.com so I've deleted the www everything else is um, default so that's it basically so that's your DNS once you've got that created um, that will upload and it will save. Now websites configuration, nothing special about this at all, this is just a, a standard um, website that I'm hosting. <coughs> no SSL um, and it's basically it's an Apache 2 web server so that's, that's what I've got set up here using ISP Config 3. So that's all the configuration you need on that. Um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go and have a look at the traffic itself. So we're going to open that. Okay, so now we are on our PC so we can have a look and have a look at the traffic. So we're going to run TCP dump for this. Minus I is the interface name. In my instance it's ENS35. I don't want to capture port um, port 22 traffic but I want to capture everything else. So let's go and make a connection. So This is the web host, or the web page running behind it, and there you can see all the inbound traffic. So I'm going to quit that, and then we can go and have a look at the traffic. So that is all working exactly as we wanted to, so we can see our server uh, replying back to our router or our WAN IP address which then takes it back inside because I'm ac accessing it from internal. Now exactly the same happens if you access it from external um, but you need to be hosting everything yourself. So that's it. If you've got any questions leave me a comment and don't forget to subscribe and like.